Well, greetings again, and we're going to talk some more about closing gaps in teeth. And we were doing this nearly 50 years ago, and I've lectured on it, and people have not gone to it like I think you ought to in doing adult orthodontics and even in kids that are missing teeth and have the losing teeth early, six-year molars dragging the second and third molars up and filling in the gaps like this. This is something that ought to be done in every orthodontic school and it ought to be taught to people uh, whether they want to do orthodontics or not so that a dentist will know that he can fill these gaps in by the teeth the person has and rather putting bridges up here and then going and saying somebody to pull a packed wisdom tooth out. You could slide these teeth forward and the tooth would, the wisdom tooth would come up and I'm going to call them like spare teeth back here. We use them and don't throw, throw them away unless you have some problem with them that they have to have to go and there's no hope in, of using them. So let's get on this young lady that we did years ago. That, uh, let me get my gear going here. This is a cute little girl. Now she just really carried on. We teased her and everything. She'd get right back with us. She's missing nine teeth in her mouth. Just didn't have them. One lateral is gone. That's a cuspid right here. And the other one was a kind of a undersized cuspid. So I, I said, well, you're missing nine and a half teeth. And plus bicuspids and molars. She missed uh, eight of those. And here, here's the thing again. Now this is a little tooth. We just spread this out and put a crown on that, push this cuspid back, put a, a bridge or something in that area. We had to have something to fill in there. We didn't have enough teeth back in here. So we put a crown on that tooth. So you're mixing up restorative with regular restorative things but use the teeth when you possibly can. Don't throw them away. You can slide them all over the place and you can do it on any body, any age, any color skin or anything. I mean, this can be done on anybody. And somebody tells you that you can't move the, the teeth in somebody that's 25 or some 35, even up to 90, I know you could move teeth. You can do that. I've run into 90, never started anybody but it. But you can move teeth I mean, as long as you're living and you've got some root up there in the bone. If you just take your time, you can move that tooth. And you can carry them from the back all the way up to the front if you took time enough to do it. And you can move them into knife edge ridges where you had bridges for years and the, the bone is just going up a little thin knife edge ridge. It starts out here and closes up this gap and you can pull teeth into that and as the teeth come they'll move the bone, they'll bring their bone with them and you can close that space. And that's been taught that you couldn't do that. And there's a lot of things that have been taught and to people, I don't know whether they knew they couldn't do it or whether they just were taught that and think that the <coughs> person teaching them knew what was going. Look down here to this. This is 8 of 71. In other words, 71 to 100 would be about 29 uh, days, something like that. It's 70 to it'd be 30, it'd be 29 days, 29 uh, years. And then it's 24 right now, old to four. So this is how long ago we did this case right here. <coughs> Pardon me. And I have 
shown this over the world for years. She had some baby teeth left in there and they were they will go away. So we went ahead and took these baby teeth out since she had second molars coming in back here, no wisdom teeth and no teeth in here. So we slide all of this forward. Same thing over here. The, these are baby teeth, there's nothing under them. And he's got the uh, second molars and the wisdom teeth or else the tooth here was a wisdom tooth with no second molar. So she's eight, missing uh, one, two, three, four, five and a half plus the ones on the bottom now would make it about nine and a half teeth that she's missing in here. The bottom teeth, there's, there's only two bicuspids, I think, and the wisdom teeth are missing here. All right, here's the bite was closed, and it's 1971. And so we took the baby teeth out, and we started moving those teeth forward the, that real quick right after. Nowadays, if we take them out or if somebody gets them out, we want them to come in and put the braces on before you take the teeth out. And you start it the very day you remove the teeth and you can close the space of a whole molar in about two, two three, uh, maybe three and a half months. You can have it all the way together like that if you get in there uh, the day the teeth are taken out. Now here we'll open this, we didn't take it out, we just built a tooth. We opened this space up wide as a lateral and then put a crown on that tooth. The other one we had to uh, put a little tapered bridge a little in there to fill it in. Now here we'll rotate that tooth, there's a, some regular orthodontics to do it. Now we took those out and we used a reverse headgear. I mean, we were doing this 50 years ago. See, you set this up, this fits on the chin, this goes on, and this can be thrown on. She can put this over there and then put her hair over it and you don't even see it. You just, you can hardly, you, get, you can see this little part right here. Now this pushes, this pulls up and it pivots on the tin right here and you pull this back in and this, how you judge just this. Now if a person's got a bad TMJ problem, you're going to be pushing back. You're going to be, well, you're actually pulling forward on the teeth, but it pushes back on the mandible so you put some a load on the TMJ, so you have to, if you've got a bad TMJ, you can only wear this while you're awake. You can't go to sleep, it'll shove it condyle into the retrodiscal tissue when you're using that. But that's an excellent a reverse, a kind of a hickam chin cup, we called it. And you pull right through the through the gap of the lip so you don't slob around on it. And she's, we made fun of her and she's, she's just getting right back at us. She, she's just the cutest gal you ever saw. Well, she's an older lady now. Somebody wrote in the other day and I got said, this was a grandchild of somebody we did. He said his grandmother worked for me back in, I don't know how many years ago. <laughs> and I, we tried to find her, uh, see who, if I renew our relationship. But this is a neat little gal and I just really enjoyed working on her. And this was back when we had uh, nothing but bands. So I banded a plastic tooth and put it in here with the other teeth. And we opened this up and we had her make a crack.
crown to go on that, and they made a crown over the other area, and the rest of it, we closed it up by bringing the back teeth to the front and close it. Now here we've already seen, they've got this out. And this has come forward in the six year, uh, this is the six year mower, and this is the second mower. And there's a wisdom tooth gone back here. So when you hook these chin cups up, we put we fold up a Kleenex or something and put on the chin to get the perspiration and to keep the chin from breaking out and putting this pressure. And you pull right through the gap of the lip when the mouth is a normal close. You hook this up. You can run this up and down right here and you run this back and hook it onto the side of the back teeth. Now it tends to bring the teeth out to the sides so sometimes we have to tie over on the other side, come in and keep the tooth lined up or have a pretty stiff wire there that, so that the tooth stays in that order. Up here we just enlarge it, that's the uh, plastic tooth in there. And you, you can tore them into the tissue, they look absolutely real while they're doing it. And you can, of course, put this on a retainer if you want to, to hold it so they can do a bridge in there. Now, on a young person like this, you might come in and, and crown a cuspid, you know, and put a cantilever bridge over on it. So here we, here we go. We got them in, and this was 826 of 1971 when we did this. And she was 12 years of age when we saw her. In other words, these are probably wisdom teeth. If she was age 12 at this time, and that tooth is there. So she's missing the, and she had some pretty bad cavities. We got but the fill of them and had it filled and we were going to drag this tooth up here and bring this one in behind it. Same thing we do up here. We drug them forward with the Hickam chin cup. Now today, if you put, you don't want to bring the front teeth back, you put a, a tad in here or screw in here and bond it to this tooth and you can pull these teeth forward and they'll stay there. You can do the same thing up here. You could put tads in there, pull it in. You wouldn't have to have the headgear. You could just pull this over and both these teeth will move forward in this space right here. So let's see here. All right, here we have done it. Let's see how, how long it took us. It's 72, nine of 72. And this was eight of 71. So it took us a, a year and a month to bring those teeth together. So these teeth are moved over here like that. Now this is far better than coming in here and, and people coming out of dental school don't have any foggy idea how they can move these teeth like that. They should be taught that that can be done so they can send them to somebody else to do it or if they want to study and work at it and learn how to do it let them do it let them do it i mean this can be done and you would not diagnose this case now here you've got to fill this in some way if we'd had a wisdom to it, i'd have pulled that cuspid up there and made it into a lateral and we'd have crowned this one to look like the cuspid that was made into a lateral. But I didn't have anything back there to pull it up there. So this, this is age 13 now at this time. Now let's see it here. Now it's age 14. We've got these teeth in. The wisdom teeth are coming in. And of course, it's 12 year molars, but this would be an awful late. 12 year molar coming in. So we go, it's 50, 1973, she's 14, and here she is 
uh, that's number four. This is 05. In other words, this is several years later. This is a cantilever bridge right here. This is the crown on the lateral. This is the tooth that was back there. This is the tooth that's back here. How much better this is than having bridges or implants or implants are great, but if it's you don't if you can use your permanent teeth, they are much better. And I would doubt if I could find this lady again, she'd be a lot older. <laughs> She's uh, 13 or something back here. That's about 50 years ago, so she'd be in her 60s now, somewhere like that. I will bet you dollars that she's got those two teeth back in here. She's taking care of them better. Now, so this is what we say in do restorative dentistry, but use orthodontics to do it and teach dentists in dental school that this can be done so they know they don't have to pull the wisdom teeth and put bridges in there or something like that. They can send them there. If the orthodontist doesn't know how to do it, they should learn how to do it. I've talked to some people that are in orthodontic school and they don't pull teeth together like that. They don't, maybe they think they have time enough to do it, but they can. And then you're going to have a little root resorptions and stuff like this on strained out teeth. But this is the best way to restore teeth. And so I want to bring this little girl up and show that. And here she is, 19. 71, that's when we started, and that's the end of the game. And I uh, hope you'll visit us again, and uh, we'll try to and sign up with our deal. And uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you this gets uh, to everybody anywhere in the world can do this to people if they know about it. And if they can't do it, learn it from these videos we're showing. Or s people that are doing orthodontics and set up to do it can learn to do it too if they're not doing this. Thank you for watching. Now.